We've assembled some of the greatest minds in cycling history. The know-it-all, Adam Kelso, reportedly has a photographic mind or something. Encyclopedic knowledge of all things cycling, well, some things, and once had to choose between a professional Nordic ski career or become a surf bum. The has-been, Billy Joe Shearsby, infamous in the world of track cycling, having won a world championship in 1993, along with two other hacks and a freckle. These days enjoys quiet walks on the beach or breaking heads. The legend, Phil Anderson, first non-European to wear the yellow jersey at some backwater race in France, Oakley's first ever pilot of their corporate jet, and so good looking that women continue to faint even at the sight of his carpet slippers. Together they are Gruppetto Show. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Grappetto Show. My name's Adam Kelsall, the know-it-all. I'd like to introduce you to my co-hosts, Billy Joe Shearsby. G'day, Adam. How are you? I'm radiant. 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 You are. You're, mm. you're glowing tonight. I am. Do you need the Phil Anderson blanket? No, no. I'm, uh, I'm just chilling here, ready to kick it off. And the man, the legend, the first athlete, not in Australia, but in the universe... To be sponsored by Oakley Sunglasses, ladies and gentlemen, please make welcome Phil Anderson. The original factory pilot. <laughs> Thank you very much. What a welcome. It's great to be back. It's great to have you here again, Phil. Now, you are heading off to France soon. Yes, I'm looking forward to uh, warmer climbs. Uh, that's a play on words as well because they're going to be doing a lot of climbing in the Pyrenees and the Alps. Uh, more than the actual uh, race, I believe. But uh, yeah, it's going to be fun. Terrific. We're going to talk more. We're going to talk about the Melbourne Route Bay, but just before we do, what are some of the climbs you're doing, Phil? What are, what are the ones you're looking forward to the most? Uh, we'll be doing the Pirisud. We're going to be doing uh, Port uh, Bales. We're going to be doing the Tourmalet, the Orbisk. Uh, we're going to be doing heaps of climbs. Terrific. And with your business? Uh, yes. Yep. Yeah. So we got two tours, one to the uh, Pyrenees. And then uh, one to the Alps, each tour about eight or nine days long. It's just people that have watched the, uh, the event on television and want to go over and experience uh, not just the event, but riding their bikes uh, in a beautiful part of the world and, and conquer some of those monumental climbs. Sounds fabulous. Now, we're going to talk more about the Tour de France later on. We're going to give our, our viewers a preview of the man himself he's going to give a preview of the race and some race predictions but before we do let's talk about last weekend's melbourne roubaix now billy joe you've been involved with fixo and andy white for a long time do you want to give us a little bit of a a bit of an outline of what the melbourne roubaix is all about sure adam yeah well the melbourne roubaix started out as you said uh, you mentioned our friend andy white who was a push bike courier much like myself uh but just a fan of cycling in particular, and he organised uh, a ride much like the Alley Cat races, which we used to have as couriers, which is where a bunch of us used to all just drink beer and race through the streets of Melbourne on a Friday night. This one was themed around the Paris Roubaix race, where we would, you know, detour through the cobblestone laneways at the back of, you know, all the back streets of Melbourne, and traditionally we would end at the Brunswick Velodrome, much like they end at the Velodrome in Roubaix. Uh, I think on the second year he had a thousand people turn up and realized that suddenly this was a real event that was going to need insurance. And uh, so it just grew from there. And I believe on the weekend we had, I think some estimates were saying 3,000 people, I believe. Uh, Yeah, it was a fantastic weekend. Started off on the Saturday night or afternoon with the Melbourne Custom Bicycle Show at the Derriman Indoor Sports Centre. Or mm. DISC, as I believe they call it. And Phil, you were at the Melbourne show as well, the Melbourne Bicycle Show. What, what are some of the bikes you saw there? Well, I actually had a couple of my own bikes uh, there. Um, one, one which was actually my favourite bike ever, which is an old Zulu bike, which I used uh, in the late 80s. And uh, it's got some of the original um, SDI, the Shimano, um, you know, integrated levers on there. 
In fact, the ones were sort of pre-production on that bike. A, a prototype? Yeah, a prototype. So, um, yeah, so it was fun to have that bike there, but see some of the other bikes, uh, some bikes going back uh, over 100 years old, but there were other bikes, like there were bikes, wooden bikes made out of plywood. Um, bikes made out of gold? There could have been some gold uh, leaf somewhere, yes, but... Uh, there was a couple of those at least. <laughs> One <laughs> stolen, apparently. <laughs> Why would you? Well, I don't know. Apparently, I just, that's just a rumour I've heard. Rumour that I've heard throughout the traps. <laughs> but anyway, uh, no, it was a fun day. And I think it was uh, like 200 bikes on display. And uh, yeah, it was, it was, it was um, you know, it was great walking around and, and seeing, you know, there were bicycle collectors there. Um, any collector is a special person. <laughs> and, and apart from yourself there, Phil, there were some notable names walking around there. Very incognito on the day. Do you recall bumping into any of those? Uh, would you like to enlighten me? There was one Stuart O'Grady the bumping fre- around. The, the Freckle. The Freckle. Or the Leopard, as we like to call him. The Leopard. Yep. There was uh, Shane Kelly popped in and out very, very early and disappeared. Uh, I believe Dean Jones, former national road team gun. And the man who brought Gore-Tex cables to mountain biking. I don't know who that is. Gore-Tex Cables. Oh, I know what Gore-Tex Cables are. Who did that, though? Dean Woods. Oh, was he there? He was... He. <laughs> I didn't see Dean Woods. <laughs> didn't you say Dean Woods? No. No, Dean Jones. Dean Jones. I apologise. Not the cricketer. Not the cricketer. Brother yeah. of Tom. Sorry. Uh, well, Phil Anderson was there as well. I definitely spotted him. May have even had a chat with him at some stage. Uh, Gordon Hill, frame builder extraordinaire. And, you know, good friend of mine. Darren uh, Bourne from uh, Bourne yes. Bicycles. Mm. Yep. Built a bike for Tony Abbott. We're going to let him slide, let that one slide until he comes <laughs> on the show to explain himself. <laughs> so is that we're going to be in his tax return? Uh, I don't Ooh. think he does tax returns anymore after doing that. <laughs> I think that's all taken care of by the Secret Service. So it was a terrific day. And then the Sunday we had the Melbourne Roubaix. And it, we, uh, Kylie, my partner and I, we parked in Melbourne and then rode out along the the uh, bike path and it was just terrific to rock up at Hawthorne Velodrome and there were bikes everywhere at, at quite a wide array of bikes. Wall to wall hipsters. Hipsters, people dressed up. I saw people from NASA. I saw Goose and Maverick from Top Gun. I saw Phil Anderson. He was there too. Phil Anderson mm. was everywhere. He was popping up everywhere over the whole weekend. We and couldn't get rid of the guy. 100, 100 Stuart O'Grady's. <laughs> We did see there was a, a group called the Stewies, and uh, yeah, they were they were out in full force with the Stuart O'Grady picture over their forehead. Um, it was good. I was chatting to Stuart at the time when they pulled up, and somebody politely asked me to move out of the way so that they could get a photo with them and Stuart O'Grady, which was just harkened back to the years of my time on the track team. I'm <laughs> sure it brings back memories, memory lane. In fact, I had some good memories because Hawthorne was my original uh, club uh, before I turned pro. So, um, yeah, it did bring back memories. We used to race, race there a couple of uh, days a week during the, uh, during the summer. And uh, to see the infield with uh, so many colourful costumes um, was uh, great to see, you know, the place come alive. What was the favourite costume you, you saw on the day, Phil? Oh, look, there was a very good uh, Lance and Dr. Ferrari <laughs> uh, get up. Um, which pretty much take the cake, but I think uh, the Top Gun uh, one was was uh, very special. Uh, you know, you got to think that that this uh, Melbourne Roubaix. It's not about. It's not really a race. It's it's certainly an event. It's not even slightly a race. <laughs> no, no, no. It's it's possibly more about the slowest than the uh, than the fastest. Or I the mean, drunkest. There, there we go. I, I was never. I didn't see the pointy end or see what happened. You know, when the first rider came in the track um, in uh, Brunswick. But it's all about a family day. It's even like a treasure hunt almost mm. because you're given like uh, a challenge of 10 questions. I don't think we got one right. Mm. No, that's just for the people who don't go straight to the coffee shop, pub and then velodrome like I do it every year. I don't. I just throw that card straight in the bin. But it's a great <laughs> community event and, uh, you know, we're going down alleyways uh, you know, there's people sort of peering over the fence, seeing what the hell is 2,000 bikers going down my back alley where they used to, you know, the shit truck used to come and <laughs> empty the dunnies. And now there's, uh, you know, 10,000 tutus going down the bloody street. <laughs> and, and Phil, I think the Melbourne people responded really well. Like, it's not every day you see two to 3,000 people in tutus or in Top Gun outfits or Lance Armstrong outfits. 
And I actually received compliments as I was riding along from motorists saying, oh, nice bike or nice suit or whatever. And that Get was, the hell out of the way. Well, actually, I didn't hear any of that. So that was no, a that really... that was me oh, saying that, that was you to in, you. In your truck. <laughs> mm. So that was a really nice surprise to, to, that, that it was so well received. Why don't we cut to some of the footage we got on the weekend? Because we got some great images and, uh, you know, interviews with people. Let's go and have a look at that now. We are at the Melbourne Custom Bicycle Show. Not Put on bike. Bicycle. bicycle. Okay. No recumbents here, I noticed. Funny that. What's the, what was the idea behind this, Andy? What, uh, you know, what, well, we had the Australian you Custom busy Bike enough? Show. Is that the problem? It wasn't busy enough. <laughs> um, we thought about an idea of swap meet before the show. Mm -hmm didn't uh, come to fruition and then I, I knew known of this event in Belgium which looked yep. awesome all these great bikes lined up and I thought I know enough people in Melbourne mm. that have cool bikes if half of them brought their bikes we'd have an event and you if you've done it. this five years ago you could have put all 250 yeah, in actually, on my yeah. bike I did have a few bikes back in the day <laughs> what, what, what is the fixo brand all about uh, well the name mm -hmm is play on myxomatosis, mm -hmm. which is a disease known in Australia for killing, killing rabbits. rabbits. But really, it was for me, it was an infectious thing. Like, killing I'm into something, <laughs> and I was infecting my friends with this passion mm -hmm. for bikes, and at the time, it was track bikes. And it was also Radiohead released a song at the time, myxomatosis, and that right. kind of sealed it. It's been great walking around here today, looking at some of the amazing bikes that people have collected. Not everyone here is a former racer. These, some of these people are just passionate collectors who've put a lot of time and effort into finding a special bike that really means something to them. I see a young fella up here that's got a bike that he's obviously spent a lot of time looking after and uh, restoring. Good evening, good day, young fella. What was your name? Billy Joe, how's it going, mate? I'm uh, Phil. Phil? Ant, never heard of him. Phil? No. No? Uh, this is a pretty special bike, Phil. There's a lot of people stopping to look at this. Uh, what year are. is this from? Uh, this is a 1990. Uh, it's a Zulo bike. It was my team bike when I was on... Um, on uh, TVM, mm -hmm. Dutch uh, team, I was there for three years, and this was uh, cutting edge at its time in it's the 90s. Super light, probably 12, 14 kilos. Yeah, something thinking? like that. Yeah, less yeah. than a ton, but yeah. uh, <laughs> close to. Um, but, I did notice that uh, the top of the brake hood here is chewed off. What day was that from? <laughs> One of those, I think it's uh, called the cock, mate. Ah. <laughs> that's right. Yeah, that, that sounds you know, filthy. Yeah, yeah that's right. Yeah, it is. But uh, yeah, I mean, this bike hasn't been restored. It's just uh, yep. basically uh, it's been sitting in a box for uh, 30 years. Mm -hmm. So very unlike modern bikes and you know the current crop of professional riders, what we see here is you've got a different type of cassette. It looks like it goes from 12, maybe 13, 13, 13, 14. 15. What's that? What's your climbing gear? Is that about a 16? Uh, yeah, that might be a uh, 21. Okay. A 21. Yeah, this is in the days when a 10 speed was a 10 speed, mm. not 10 on the back. <laughs> So a lot of passionate uh, people here, collectors from all types. Uh, g'day, mate. What's your name? How are you, Phil? My name's Billy. Billy, Billy Joe. Billy. Uh, <laughs> Billy. Uh, do you know anything about this uh, this bike, mate? Unfortunately, I do, Phil. This bike is one of the ones that gives me nightmares at night. My crutch has never recovered. If you can look at that position there, your handlebars are not meant to be that far below your seat. They're just not. That there is about the same size as the one on my road bike, the, the biggest one I have. Doesn't matter, this is the only one that matters here. This is the big fella here. Ah, okay. Mm. The big meat. The big meat. Mm. Do you want to take it for a ride? No, I really shouldn't. I've probably, all right. <laughs> oh, this hurts. Oh, this sucks. Do you want me to track stand it? No. No, <laughs> just... <laughs> no, no, Billy, don't, it's someone else's bike. As uh, I'm walking around the, the Melbourne Custom Bike Show, <laughs> I seem to recognise some of these bikes and uh, I believe I might have come upon one of my old ones here. Darren, isn't it? That's right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Darren, oh, geez, yeah. this, is a, uh, this is something from uh, the old Panasonic days by the looks past. of it. Yeah, yep. Maybe like uh, an 85, an 86? 86 or 87. Oh, okay. You rode yep. these, yeah. yeah. So we're here at the Melbourne Custom Bike Show with Paul Farron, who has one of the uh, best collection of bicycles in Australia. And uh, Paul, what do you got here today? Well, some years ago you said, I'm glad I never had to race any of that, this, this old iron. 
<laughs> with my bikes. So I thought I'd bring a bamboo one along that you could race on. Well, that's right. Everybody's very proud of their steel bikes here. That's quite a fashion, but to have something uh, made out of wood. Well, I, I, there's actually quite a few wooden bicycles I, I here. I did see a couple of there, ply there's bikes. There's a sort of everlasting appeal of, with, with wood. So, uh, Paul, no, what's, what's this uh, meter down here? That's, uh... Uh, well, they didn't have G um, GPS of nilometers in those days. <laughs> <laughs> Guess what? <laughs> this is the 1890s version. Okay. Oh, and, I... and there's a little thing that goes around and ticks over and tells you how far you've gone. And if you actually time yourself and you were good at maths, you could actually work out the speed you were travelling at. <laughs> So it's been a treat, mate. Walk down memory lane. Mm, it's been fantastic. Seen some really cool bikes. Yeah, a few horror stories. Oh, God, yeah, that little ride on that, that, that pursuit bike made my crush regret it oh, oh, instantly. Oh. <laughs> Start to get shivers, mate. Mm, what do you reckon? Are you going to come back uh, again next year? Yeah, oh, certainly. No, this has been a uh, it's been a real treasure, actually. Try to dig up uh, a few more Ando bikes for it? Uh, yes, yep. <laughs> so we're in Hawthorne at the start of the Melbourne Royal Bay, this is the 10th, you've mm -hmm. done quite a few. This is my very first, so I'm not sure what to expect. Uh, look, it's going to be fantastic. This is my fourth, possibly fifth, I can't quite remember, Phil, but it's going to be amazing. The weather's perfect, people are everywhere, there's bikes, outfits, and uh, we're going to head out and go and meet some of the people now. So Monique, you've got quite a, a get up here. What, what, are, what, are we, what is this, a dragon? Did I see flames coming out here? If you've seen How to Train Your Dragon, the movie, which okay. is very popular with the kids and with my daughter, uh, this is toothless. <laughs> Welcome to this Roubaix, people. There are celebrities everywhere. I've seen Phil Anderson, I've seen Stuart O'Grady, Lance Armstrong and Dr. Ferrari. Oh, yeah, Out here for his first all, appearance. See you all. Mm. And uh, you're clean for this one, I'm guessing? Absolutely, it's just vitamins. Just yeah. vitamins, excellent. We're ready to go. Yeah. All right, all right. If and you don't believe in credible cycling, I feel really sorry for you. You've got to dream big. <laughs> dream big. Have you got my vitamins? Mm -hmm. That's right. Oh, there we go. Oh, oh. Uh, it's a story. This is like uh, my old, well, I never raced in a rally, but uh, yeah, the year after I went to rally, I, I rode the Panasonic, of course, with the Panasonic team. So what's your story, mate? This one's a 1978 um, Team TI rally that um, is original. Uh, apart from the rear cassette, because I'm getting a bit old and I can't ride up the hills quite as well as I used to. Uh, we're right here. No idea where it is, but it's part of this Route 8 ride. Um, I'm following this Hubbard up here, he doesn't know where he's going either. <laughs> Morning everyone, we're at Melbourne Rubay. We're loving life. And I'd like you to introduce you to... Easy. Easy. Where are you from, Easy? Uh, Q. Q, which is not... It's close. It's not far, Q. It's Where, close. No, close to what I did there. We're on our way, actually. I bet you've never heard that one. What brings <laughs> you to the Melbourne River? Well... We don't know where we are. Is it down there? Can't be too hard to find a coffee around here. Where are we getting a chance to get in the coffee era? <laughs> Hello, Norm Douglas. <laughs> <laughs> when, I first, when I first started to go out with Phil Anderson, all yes. of your stuff like who? And they knew that I was like bike Phil rider. Anderson, what if? So, but he's also a GC rider. Mm. So, you know, he's a good sprinter. Mm. But he's got a little bit more meat on him. He's a good him. stayer. Mm. Mm -hmm. Is he's he like that in bed? Long, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he's actually all the same age. Hi mate. Hey, man. How are you doing? Good. What's your name? Brendan. Brendan, you're doing a fine job there. Thank you very much. Hello, sir. Good day. How are you? Enjoying Melbourne River? I'm, I'm doing well, actually. You are. What What's the problem here? No, no problem at all. I had no a flat problem. tire, but luckily I had a Melbourne Rupee repair kit from about three years ago. Fantastic. So, so here with uh, Maverick. 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 Here Maverick. with uh, Maverick, and on the back of Maverick we have Goose. Goose. The Iceman. <laughs> The Iceman, is it? No, no, no. No, no. no. The Iceman and the Maverick didn't talk, did they? <laughs> Melbourne, Roubaix! 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 Where, where are we? Are we lost? Um, no, 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 not we're not hard. too bad. It's I think, uh... But who cares, right? We, we, yeah, that's we got right. this? Yeah, that's it. That's right. Yeah. So, all, all sorted? Yeah, yeah, it's all good. Where's the 
So we're here on the final section of cobbles and we've come across what is definitely the <laughs> smallest human being I've seen today. <laughs> Into the corner, yes! <laughs> Here we are, final brutal section of cobbles. It's been a long, horrific day. Fortunately, I've got a couple of pints in the tank. We're on the home stretch. I can practically smell the finish line now, folks. The end of another Melbourne Roubaix. Oh. Hey! Oh, you fall off there, I'm hey, all Hold on, Billy. Hey, hey, you young me. lady, hey, oh, young man, how are you? To the left. Come on, just to the left. So Adrian, uh, the finish here, mate, how do you yes. feel? Um, I'm feeling actually surprisingly fresh. <laughs> surprisingly fresh. Did you ride yeah. today? Yes, I did. You look like you've come straight out of the uh, makeup truck. No, I haven't. No? <laughs> so here at the finish, um, how's it going with the wife beater, mate? Oh yeah, not too bad. <laughs> It's always on. Yeah. Oh. Mingling, we're mingling. Okay, mingling. so um, had a good day today? We've had a wonderful day, thank you. It's been no, intergalactically it's fabulous. Really Astronomical. Oh, and Ruth, you, you call in sick. What's this, a uh, <laughs> bit of honey nectar there? Oh, you know, oh, this, is this is okay. Cure. Hangover. Yeah, hot toddy. Yeah, hot toddy. Oh, okay. Uh, hair of the dog? Hair yeah. Big night last night, yeah. was it? Yeah. So, what am I doing? Yeah. I'm going to ask, can I ask you oh. a question for my microphone. It's actually a scarf, but I'll okay. But I'll go with it. Makes it look very important. Okay. So, uh, whole out of the day? Um, oh, the donuts. Donuts. What is it with these bloody donuts? We missed out. Where do you get them? Is that here? Yeah. So, we're here at the finish of the 10th ever Melbourne Roubaix. Uh, this is a day where a lot of people get to do th something they've never done, which is ride on cobblestones, much like they do in Europe. Um, there's a young fella here. I think this is his first Melbourne Roubaix. How did you go today? Totally lost. <laughs> <laughs> how, did you, how did you go on the um, on the cobblestones? I mean, this is your first time. You didn't struggle no, too much. I got, I got overtaken by Where's Wally um, <laughs> and a few Captain Americas. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> so you, you managed. Fun. You kept it together. Didn't crash. No crashes. No, no crashes. Yeah, yeah. You gonna Not be back yet. next year, you reckon? Maybe? I'd love to be back. <laughs> awesome event. Ladies and gentlemen, Stuart O'Grady, winner. Of the Paris Roubaix. But not Melbourne Roubaix. <laughs> but not Melbourne Roubaix. There is no winner here. We're all winners. It would be my mm. longest ride if I if, if I did it. To ride. We're here with the man of the hour, Mr. Andy White. Billy, how's it gone? Seamless. Perfect. Flawless. Everyone's had a good time. I see the beer tent's working today. Is that a big <laughs> race? Yeah, well, that was a debacle. Did not last work night. at the bike mm, show and no beer. Some, some angry, angry hipsters, angry attendees, <laughs> and beards. And have you had a good day? I've had a brilliant day. That's fantastic. Yeah. And are you going to do it again next year? Oh, Please do I suppose it again I have next. to. <laughs> Melbourne Roubaix, Melbourne Roubaix, done for the day. Enjoy it, Storm oh, Trooper. Fantastic. And there you have it, folks. What a great weekend. Bike shows, famous cyclists, people dressed like Lance Armstrong with blood bags hanging out of their shoulders, Stuart O'Grady. Wasn't the freckle there presenting, just fantastic. It was great to see him, young fella. And how about that interview with Shane Kelly? I thought he seemed a little bit drunk, though. Did you think that, too? Very much. A little bit pissy pants there, Phil? I'm not sure. The guy's a wild card, I will say that. How did you find it, Phil? No, the guy really enjoyed the weekend. Um, I was there for just about every part, except for that interview with Shane. But uh, mm, other Neither was he. I wouldn't worry too much. <laughs> but no, it was great. I mean, I think the whole community thing, and I, I think um, Andy White's on something here. This could be something that goes uh, interstate, maybe even globally. You know, it's a... Uh, they I should have one in France, maybe from maybe Paris to, I don't know, Roubaix. They could actually make it for money. There we go. They mm. could do it, couldn't they? Well, that'd be a horrible race. Why would you do that? Yeah, oh, yeah. No, forget that. Yeah, terrific event, Phil, Billy Joe, I agree. And I think a really Melbourne event. The cobbles, the coffee, the, beer. the pubs, mm. the, 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 the people, the, the bikes. Beards, the tattoos. A, the tattoos, the hips, the thing. Just a really Melbourne event. I, it's definitely Andy's onto something. If people want to get onto it next year, this year it's sold out in two days. So it's really the quick and the dead. So don't Melbourne even try. Event. It's not worth it. <laughs> but if you do want to try, fixo.co. And bless Andy's heart, they also do a thing where if you're from out of town and you miss out, you can still get in. So keep an eye out for Melbourne Roubaix next year. Can't wait. Right now, Billy Joe, I'm having a fanboy moment. I never thought this would happen in my 40-year life that I would throw to Phil Anderson for a Tour de France preview. I know, it still weirds me out a little bit that I've had Phil Anderson over to my house for dinner three times. 
To be fair, one of them's only because I deleted the you, whole podcast. And are you embarrassed that you Phil Anderson ate tofu? No, no, I'm, I'm cool with tofu. You're cool, I'm cool with, tofu? with tofu? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Um, tofu and ponytails. It's a nice thing. Yeah. So, Phil... If only we could throw to the ponytail. <laughs> mm. <laughs> Maybe when Phil's in France. So, Phil, we've got you here to talk about the Tour de France. Uh, very quickly, let's touch on last year's because that gives a lot of context for this year. Last year, Christopher Froome, the, the British, by the way, of... South Africa. Kenyan cyclist. Is that Kenyan or South African? South African, trust me. We'll, we'll call them African. African, by the way of Africa. Afro-Australian, I prefer. Christopher Froome crashed out, Contador crashed out, Nibali won. Is Nibali the real deal or is he a pretender? No, I think he's, uh, he is the real deal. I think everybody remembers uh, watching him. Uh, I think it was up Porta Carmel or in the Pyrenees. I think it was the last mountain stage and he was barely grimacing and he was just uh, rode away from everybody. So... I think he's a real deal. It would have been great to have uh, to have both Froome and Contador there, but uh, that's why we're going to be staying up late, late, uh, watching uh, watching it this year to see you know what really goes on. So this year we have some real hitters. We've got Nibali, who we already mentioned, excellent bike control, very good cyclist. Christopher Froome, Alberto Contador. We've also got the dark horses, Nero Quintana, Quintana from. <laughs> Nero Quintana. Nero somebody, that's for sure. From Colombia. We've also got Thibaut Pino, the 25-year-old from France, who finished third last year. Or as we will know him, T-Bone Pinoir. Thibaut Pinoir. We all love a bit of Pinoir. Phil, what, what's, what order are you going to rank them in for this year's tour? Oh, look, I get asked this quite a bit, but I think, uh, look, I think Froome's going to uh, be dominant. Uh, everybody last year thought it was going to be Froome and uh, Contador, but uh, Contador has just, just come off the Giro and uh, he did it pretty hard there. He did win uh, quite convincingly, but uh, by the by the end of the race, he'd started to wear a little bit and, uh, he, you know, I think he's trying to downplay his chances, saying he is fatigued and I think he... Deep down, I think he possibly is. You know, while he was getting thrashed in uh, in Italy, Froome was had his legs in cotton wool. You know, doing uh, very controlled efforts. Uh, you know, taking it easy, watching everybody suffering out there, and uh, you know, he still came out and and did uh, very well in the Dolphin A. And and um, yeah, so other than those two. Uh, yeah, Nibbly, uh It's going to be good to see how he goes. He's um, you know, he's been riding very conservatively so far. Uh, and then, of course, Quintana, as you mentioned as well. I think, uh, you know, I'd like to really see him mm. uh, step up this year. But, yeah, I think it's going to be Froome. Uh, then maybe Quintana. Contador, I hope he's still up there because he's a very exciting rider to watch. You mm. know, just watch him in the first mountains. So, Phil, speaking of Contador, you mentioned that he might be still experiencing a fair bit of fatigue from the Giro. Will, no. will his fake shoulder injury still be plaguing him? Because <laughs> we know he pretended that didn't really happen, did it? Uh, no? I don't know. I don't know. You know, I've had shoulder problems before and uh, you could see every time he got up on the podium, uh, you know, he couldn't raise his, his arm, uh, you know, but he clearly recovered by the third week because he was like, uh, you know, giving everybody high fives, uh, you know, when, he, <laughs> when uh, coming to the finish there on the last day. <laughs> if Contador does win and wins the double, he will be the first man to do it since... Um, Marco Pantani, the pirate. One, one of my favourites, despite his, Dumbo, despite his foibles. Uh, Phil, is it good for cycling if Contador backs up and wins the tour after winning the Giro, or will it just increase the doubters? Uh, look, I think it would be okay. Um, you know, of course, he's been spurred on by uh, that director of his. Oleg Tinkoff. Tinkoff, that's right. Olaf and, Tinkoff, I apologise. And he's always put out challenge. I think his, his, uh, the first challenge he put out was to do all three, to do the Vuelta, mm. the Giro and the Tour de France. And I think he put a million euros up for uh, anybody to get out there. Now, I don't know uh, if that's only like for the uh, general classification contenders that he'll give a million euro to mm. because, of course, we've got Adam Hansen who's uh, mm. done... I think uh, 25 or 50 uh, consecutive tours now. <laughs> what is it now? What's it going to be? It's in the hundreds. It's 10 or 11, and for, yeah. a, for a professional cobbler, that's a very good effort. If Adam Hansen completes the tour, he equals the record for the most Grand Tours ever completed. Another interesting aside with Contador is that he has Peter Sagan in his team. 
So, which is Team Tinkoff, as we mentioned. So that means this the team will be splitting the resources between Sagan trying to get the green jersey and Contador trying to get the yellow jersey. How do you think that'll play out, Phil? Uh, yeah, look, I think it's already been settled that uh, Sagan will be by himself mm-hmm. in that regard for the finishes. Um, you know, he hasn't he's, he hasn't got the same speed that he had two or three years ago. Um, he could actually develop into a general class classification rider in, in uh, years to come. He's still got youth on his side. So, you know, I think he'll be uh, up there to help for the general classification. If the opportunity comes, uh, he can never be underestimated if, if he's in a uh, small uh, breakaway or a group towards the finish. But, yeah, I, th- I don't know. I think there's other sprinters there that will be, um, you know, and it is a very mountainous mm, tour this very year too. I think there's only like maybe six sprinter stages. The rest are all... Uh, mm. Out the door for the sprinters. What do you think might uh, the effect be of having Alp Duez on the second last day for the sprinters on the Champs Elysees? Do you think this could be the first year we see a not 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 a recognised sprinter take the stage? Uh, well, where in uh, Paris? Yes, mm. in Paris. Uh, well, it has been done before, but uh, no, it could do because they say that. Uh, f- it's like halfway through the stage, the last nine stages, they're all mountain stages mm. except for the last stage. So anybody that's in contention for the green jersey, they have to ride all that way through the mountains to be able to uh, to be able to keep that jersey. So and the misconception that a lot of people have, who you know, cycling public who don't understand how it works, if you're sitting out the back in the Gruppetto, as it's known, they're not just dawdling along all day. They have to actually make the cutoff time. Those guys don't get to just roll along and then save themselves for the last day, do they, Phil? No, there is a cut-off time every day, which is, uh, you know, normally it's it's uh, 12%. Uh, you know, if it's a shorter stage, it might be a little bit more, might be 15%. But, uh, but yeah, the uh, sprinters become very good mathematicians because they get to know, <laughs> uh, they can calculate very quickly how many minutes behind the winner of the stage they can be before they're thrown out. So, um, and yeah. so it becomes like a team time trial for guys who don't like to train very hard. <laughs> that's right. Well, yeah. <laughs> we won't go there. <laughs> oh, I'll go, I'll go there. Just I, That's fine. <laughs> so, Phil, speaking of the green jersey, we've got Andre Greipel, the big unit. We've got Marcel Kittel. We've got Peter Sagan. We've got Mark Cavendish. And we've also got the Australian, Mark Bling Matthews. How do you think Bling will measure up against the big boys? A touch shorter. <laughs> I think. <laughs> no, I mean, he's, he's, uh, he's quite tall, actually. I, I think it's possible, Adam, just refer to him as Mark Matthews, which is great. <laughs> <laughs> Michael Matthews. Matthews. No, 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 it's Mich- Michelle, Michelle Matthews. Matthews. Mark, who's Mark Matthews? I have no idea. Probably a cricketer. Yeah, Mark, could, 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 let's do that again. So, Phil, we've got Andre Greipel, we've got Mark Cavendish, we've got... Michael Bling Matthews and we've got Marcel Kittel all vying for the green jersey. Who do you rate? Oh, sorry. How do you rate Michael Matthews against those other big hitters? Yeah, no, I think he's uh, he's got a chance because uh, Matthews is is uh, he's not a pure sprinter. Mm. If you had him and Greipel up against each other, uh, you know, if they were both on their on their game, I think uh, Gripe would possibly have the uh, better of him. However, if you throw a hill in there, mm. uh, like what you've got in the last 10 days, because it's not just uh, a matter of winning stages, uh, you have to finish in the top, um, you know, they give points down to like 10th place. So uh, you just have to be consistent through the three weeks. And uh, you pick up a couple of points a day, a couple of points tomorrow, even in the mm. mountain days, you know, if you can get up there in the top 10 uh, and get a few points there. Uh, they're the ones which Matthews you get that Greipel won't get. So, Phil, the big units, Greipel and Kittle, can they get through the mountains and finish on the Champs-Élysées? Look, I think uh, they can. I, look, it's a uh, it's a tough one, really, because, uh, you know, nine stages straight m- with mountains uh, or hilly stages, they're not going to be getting into those points those days. So will they uh, continue to ride... If they haven't got the green jersey, if they're not defending it, they might just pull the pin, which is great for somebody like Matthews. I think Matthews is in with a real show this year. Uh, Cavendish, Kittle, all those big boys, they'll struggle to get through the hills. So it'll be interesting to see 
Is anyone going to match Kettle's hair though this year? No, de- no, no chance. So no Rigoberto Uran. No, no, no Uran in this year's tour. So, um, so Kittle's going to run away Kittle with the hair had, jersey. He's, he's got the hair stakes the hair well, jersey, and, well and truly tied up. As a former winner of the hair jersey, Phil, <laughs> how do you rate Kittle's chances? Well, it sounds like uh, he's already won it. Yeah, I mean, there's no. Yeah. He doesn't have the ponytail. We can't give him that. No. I think yours was the last splendid pony, ponytail. Which I mean, we will be interviewing the ponytail in the future mm-hmm. on this show. But uh, no, I think I think he's in a good for a good shot with that one anyway. Yeah, mullets seem to have left the peloton, haven't they? Mm, largely, largely so. Yeah. yeah, I think Neil Stevens was. He wasn't the last one. Uh, he was the shortest one, though. Definitely <laughs> mm. the yeah. sweariest one. Yes. So, Phil, the first stage usually they have a quite a short prologue. This year they've got a fifteen-kilometer time trial. And this is where we might see some Aussies come into play. Rowan Dennis from Team BMC was the hour record for a short time. Can he win the time trial, 15-kilometre time trial, stage one? Look, Australians are traditionally pretty good. Uh, A lot of the Australians uh, come through the track endurance program. So somebody like uh, Dennis, yeah, he's got the 24 hours. Sorry. (laughs) He's got the the, uh, He did the 24-hour record in one hour. That's how quick he is. He's very quick. (laughs) He's very quick. He smashed it. Yeah, he did. But um, no, so yeah, he'll be motivated. He'll Mm. want to uh, show his presence on the team because, uh, of course, he changed teams last year. So um, yeah, he wants to uh, show... BMC that they've made the right decision having him on board. Now, Phil, you're going to be over there. Tell us, tell us about your plans for France over the next few weeks. Uh, yes, well, I fly straight to Barcelona in Spain, so I'm <laughs> that's not in France, though, is it? Uh, it's not even. Uh, no. it's not even near Holland where the where the race starts. Um, yeah, so yeah, we've just got a um, a group of of um, friends who we're going to uh, spend basically ten days riding in the Pyrenees and waiting for the Tour de France to come mm, to us. Terrific. So we see the and then we see the race for a couple of days in the uh, in the in the mountains in the Pyrenees and then uh, and then that tour finishes and we pick up in Avignon in uh, Provence and then we go into the Alps. So yeah, everybody wants to ride in the mountains. Mm. Overrated, I reckon. <laughs> why, why doesn't anyone want to follow the Tour of Holland? That would be way easier, wouldn't it? Yeah, as long as you got a tailwind. Tailwind, you got the, you know, it's flat. They've got the weed. I mean, it'd be way better. <laughs> Windmills. Windmills. Dikes. Tulips. Dikes. Well, there's a lot of them. So, Phil, if people, if people want to get on board one of your tours, how do they go about it? What's the best way to go about it? Uh, just go online, philandersoncycling.com.au. And just to finish up, if you could tell us, as a former competitor, now a organiser of tours over there, what is it that you love about the Tour de France? What, what draws you to it each year? Look, it's a, just a, uh, it's really like a Disneyland for a cyclist, just mm-hmm. riding the beautiful uh, terrain over there. It's the middle of summer, uh, quiet roads, such a variety of, of terrain. Uh, you know, it's not as big as Australia, but um, just about every corner of France is, mm-hmm. is, uh, is paradise for a cyclist. It sounds fantastic. We should head over ourselves, Billy Joe. We should at some stage, definitely. Mm-hmm. Hopefully, this show gets big enough that we get to take Grappetto Show to France. Someone might fly us there. Mm, that'd be good. That'd be great. And that's probably going to do it from us here at Grappetto Show with myself, the has-been, Billy Joe Shearsby, my co-host as always. Adam Kelsall, the know-it-all. And the legend himself, Phil, Phil Anderson. Anderson. Thanks for joining us, Phil. Phil.